In this video, we are going to compare linear and exponential functions. So this is the major thing that you need to take away from this lesson. Exponential functions will forever and always eventually exceed linear functions. So that means that no matter if you have a linear situation or an exponential equation, um, situation, the exponential function will always surpass the linear function every single time. No matter the numbers, no matter the situation, exponential will always eventually exceed linear. So let's look at example one. On example one, it says your uncle gives you $10 for your birthday and offers you two options. Option one is to increase the money he gives you each year by $50. And option two is to increase the money he gives you by 50% each year. Which option should you choose? We're going to create a table of values to help us figure this out. So option one is that he's increasing our, the money that he gives us by $50 each year. So that means that he's adding $50. So right now we get $10 for our birthday. Next year, $10 plus 50 is $60. And then the year after that, if we add another 50, we'll have $110. And then the year after that, if we add another 50, we'll get $160. The year after that, we'll get $210. The year after that, we'll get $260. And then what about 10 years from then? Well, let's think about this. Is this um, situation linear or exponential? Well, we are adding $50 every time. This pattern is addition. So this is linear. And we want to write an equation that models this option. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. Our starting amount is $10. So that's going to be b. And that makes sense because that's when x is 0. And then my slope, well, I'm just adding 50 every time. So my rate of change is 50. So my equation is going to be y equals 50x plus 10. So if I want to figure out when x is 10, there's two ways that we can do this. We can plug this equation into Desmos and then go to when x is 10, or you can take 10 and plug it in for x. 50 times 10 is 500 plus 10 is $510. If I want to figure out for when x is 20, you can plug it into Desmos, look at your table, and change it to 20. Or you can multiply it out here. Let me show you how to do it in Desmos for this one. So in Desmos, I would type in 50x plus 10. And then we could go to our table of values. And you can see all the values that we got there. For 10, we got 510, and now I want to know for 20, and that would be $1,010. Now let's look at option two. Option two, we're getting $10 the first year, the same as option one. But now we are increasing by 50% each year. So... Let's think about this. If I increase by 50%, well, what's 50% of 10? Well, that's five. So I'm gonna add $5, so this is gonna be 15. Now, if this is a little bit confusing, we could use an equation. So let's start off with an equation for this one. Here, I am going to do um, a equals p times 1 plus or minus r to the power of t. We learned about this formula when we talked about exponential functions. p is your starting amount. We are starting with $10. This is an increasing situation, so I'm going to add. 
And then 50%, if I change that to uh, decimal, that would be 0.5. So our equation is going to be 10 times 1.5 to the power of t. This is an exponential equation because our pattern is going to be multiplication. Now there's two different ways that you could look at this. You could look at it as your R value is 1.5. Think about your common ratio. So here we're multiplying by 1.5 every time. So in our calculators, if we did 10 times 1.5, we got 15. And then we could do 15 times 1.5. Whoops. 15 times 1.5 and get $22.50. And all I did was multiply by 1.5. If you don't like multiplying by 1.5 every time, you don't have to. We can write our equation into Desmos. So in Desmos, I can say, okay, my starting amount was 10 times 1.5. And then in Desmos, your exponent will be x. So if we go to our table of values here, we can just go ahead and fill this in. This would be 10, and this would be 20. So let's see. Um, we're on year three. So year three, we're going to get $33.75. And year four, we're going to get $50.63. Now notice, I had to round this one appropriately. Money only has two decimal places. So when I look at my decimal places, I have 0 0.625. 5 means I'm going to round this up, so $50.63. After 5 years, we have $75.94. After 10 years, we're going to have $5. And after 20 years, we're going to have $33,252.57. So let's look at this for a second. Let's figure out which one is higher. So after, in year one, which one is better? Option one or option two? Option one is better. In year two, which one is better? 110 or $20.50? Look at this mistake that I made. Decimal is two decimal places, so that should have a zero there. Well, $110 is better. For year three, which is better? $160 or $33.75? $160. For year four, $210 is better. For year five, $260 is better. For year 10, $576.65 uh, $76 is better. And for year 20, $3,000 uh, $3 is better. So while it seems like the linear, exp um, the linear equation is better in the beginning, as time goes on, you're going to get way more money using the exponential one. So the question is, which option should you take? Explain. You should always choose exponential over linear because you will get more money over time. So option two, because uh, I will receive. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Receive more money in 
the long run. Again, that's because exponential equations always eventually exceed linear equations. Let's look at example two. Selena has $300 in her savings account and makes a $50 deposit each month. Is this linear or exponential? Well, let's see. If she's putting in $50 every month, then she's adding $50 every month. So this is telling us that we are adding $50 every month. If our pattern is addition, then this is going to be a linear situation. Then we wanna write an equation to model this. So I'm gonna use slope intercept form. Let's see. Our starting amount is $300, so that's B, and we're adding $50 every month, so that's our rate of change. So our equation will be Y equals 50X plus 300. And then part C says how much money will Selena have in three months? So that means that X is three. So I will have Y equals 50 times three plus 300. So that will be Y equals 150 plus 300. So Y will be $450. On example three, it says Samuel has $300 in a savings account and increases his savings by 15% each month. Is this linear or exponential? If you're increasing by a percentage, then you're multiplying. And so that is going to be an exponential situation. We want to write an equation to model this. So again, I'm going to use that formula that we learned earlier. And let's see, our initial amount is $300, so that's P. It's increasing, so we're going to use our plus sign. And then 15%, if I want to write that as a decimal, I'm going to do 15 divided by 100, which is 0.15. So my equation will be A equals 300 times 1 plus 0 0.15 raised to the power of T. And I want to know how much money he's going to have in three months. So T is 3. So I'm going to have A equals 300 times 1.15 raised to the third power. And I'm just going to go ahead and type that into Desmos. So I have 300 times 1.15 raised to the power of 3, whoops, and I get $456.26. What was it? 56.26. And we want to know who is saving more money. So if we look back up here, we have that Selena saved $450 and that Samuel saved $456.26. So who saved more? Samuel. Samuel.